Back when the days were sunny and breezy, and the evenings long and cool, there was a beautiful hen which stayed with her parents in the bush. Although they were very poor, her parents would try their best to take care of all her needs. They always went about pecking at the ground to try and find the tastiest grains for her to eat. Eventually, all their efforts showed because she was one of the loveliest creatures to look on. One day, a majestic hawk was hovering around in the air in the morning, as was his custom, flying round and round, making large circles in the air and swooping up and down without ever moving his wings. He wasn't looking for anything per se and was just flying around aimlessly when something lovely caught his eye. Although he was very far up in the sky, he knew he had to come down a little lower and find out whether his eyes were just deceiving him or his mind were playing tricks on him. He swooped down a little lower and lo and behold, he saw a young and beautiful hen pecking away at some corn in her father's compound. The hawk instantly fell in love and decided to have a chat with the hen. In the twinkle of an eye, he flapped his wings and perched himself on the fence next to her. He then greeted the hen with his most enticing whistle and began to tell her how beautiful she was. It was the first time that the hen was approached in such a manner and so she stood transfixed listening to what this handsome hawk had to say. After he was done, the hen blushed and thanked him for all his kind words and he went away. The next day, Mr. Hawk came by with a different poem from the day before. Days and weeks went by and a budding romance grew between the two creatures until the hawk finally summoned the courage to tell the hen that he wanted to marry her. The hen was of course over the moon and took him to her parents who had been waiting for this day for an eternity. The hawk then paid the dowry that was agreed upon and which was mostly in the form of corn and the next day the hawk took his new beautiful bride off to his home. A few days later, a young cock who lived close to the hen's former home, found out that the young hen whom he had admired and was secretly in love with for so long was now married. Nights went by with his heart filled with regret. Why didn't he make an effort to know her, to ask her to be his wife, to even speak to her? Try as he might, he just could not get over the fact that she was married. And so he found out where she was living and went there, determined to make her come home to her home country and marry him instead. He showed up at her place at dawn, knowing full well that the hawk would not be around. He flapped his wings a million times and crowed in his best voice to get her attention. The hen came out of her house and wondered in amazement at the young cock. Months before the hawk came, she had prayed and hoped in her heart that the cock would talk to her, see her, or even notice her by some chance. And now it was happening. But wasn't it too late? She only accepted Hawk's proposal, not really because she loved him, but just so she could finally be free from home. Her heart really belonged to the cock. And so she could not resist his invitation and she went with him to her parents' house with the young cock strutting confidently and crowing at intervals. The hawk who was hovering around in the sky had seen the whole incident and was extremely angry. However, it was against the law for a creature to take matters in his own hands. He therefore went to Calabar 
to obtain justice from the king who called for the parents of the hen and told them that if the hen did not go back to the hawk, they should return his dowry according to their native custom. The hen's parents then explained to the king that they were very poor and could not afford to pay back the dowry. And unfortunately, the hen was madly in love with the cock and refused to go back to the hawk. So the king told the hawk that he could kill and eat any of the cock's children whenever and wherever he found them as payment of his dowry. And if the cock made any complaint, the king would not listen to him.